Trigger warning, infidelity, family struggles, violence, trauma. My selfishness ruined my family. Here's a TLDR. I had an affair. My ex walked in on us, acted out, went to jail for five years, and spent four of them in protective custody after an attempt. My kids refuse to acknowledge me, my brother hates me, and I've been trying so hard to make amends, especially with my ex, since he got out. I'm a selfish person. At least that is what I say to myself repeatedly, almost every night, when I hear the silence in my home. My children aren't here. My ex-husband hates me for good reason. My immediate family is divided, and I never stopped hating myself for what I did. My selfish act happened in 2015. I just turned 39, and I admit I took my ex-husband for granted. My ex always told me that I was beautiful on a daily basis, always wanted to have sx, always took care of me, and treated me like his equal. He never treated me like a queen or a princess, I was his partner. We'd been married for 20 years by that time. High school sweethearts were each other's one and only, and it felt right. My family loved him, my brother looked up to him, and my ex helped him through a lot of tough situations. My ex was the one people called when they were in trouble, and he helped them. He was a good man. Through the years, I gave him two headstrong boys at the time of this. They were 18, 16 and twin princesses 13. I gained weight and felt self-conscious, and he would tell me that I was beautiful. Our arguments were always few and far between. We talked everything out, but when we did argue, it was usually about SX or lack thereof on my behalf and the things I refused to do in bed. It wasn't as if I didn't want to do them, it's just that I wasn't in the mood, and he understood. When I turned 39, my birthday party revealed the new me. I spent all year in the gym doing yoga and pillates. My effort took me from being 180 to 135, and for me, it was an amazing transformation. I've always been a chubby girl, so to have a body that was tight and fit was a new experience. My ex-husband also went to the gym with me, but not as much. However, he went from 260 to 225 and was starting to shape his body. My ex-husband couldn't keep his hands off of me, but for some reason, I still wasn't in the mood. It's not like he didn't try. We went to dinners, danced, and did regular walks. He always helped around the house, and I could see in his eyes how much he loved and lusted for me. We spent 20 years together, and he still looked at me with desire. I believe any woman would desperately want that, but mentally, I just wasn't in the mood. At the time, I thought I was going through early menopause since we only had SX2, maybe three times a month, and I was just one and done. But he wanted more, and no matter how much he tried, I just wasn't into it. He mentioned couple counseling, and I refused. So now my selfishness comes into play. A new manager started working in my office a few days after my birthday. He was slightly younger and handsome, and for some reason, he took an interest in me. At first, I ignored him, then it went from ignoring to casual conversation, then he flirted, and I showed him my ring. However, after two months of constant flirting, I flirted back, which led to me telling him about my life, and I found myself thinking about him more and more. This was an emotional affair, I know that now, but at the time, I felt high. My ex-husband suspected there was something off with me. We had a heated argument about it, one that I honestly believed started. He went to kiss me, and I subconsciously made a disgusted look. It wasn't towards my ex. I was thinking about this man when he leaned in, and I felt disgusted with the whole thing. At least that is what I say to myself. A week after that day, I told the new manager to meet me at a cafe so we could talk. I had every intention to tell this man to leave me alone. I told him that I couldn't do this, but before I could say anything to him, he kissed me, and my mind went blank. That was the beginning of our six-month affair. During that time, I did things for this man that my ex wanted. I was more eager and willing. I was always in the mood. I believe it was because it was something new. My ex and I did have SX during this time, but not as frequently. I began pushing him away, nitpicking on his little habits. I even belittled him. I'm ashamed of how I treated him during that time. I only realized what I was doing when my brother came to visit me and told me that my ex confided to him about how depressed he was feeling and was thinking about filing a separation, saying that he felt that I don't love him anymore and that he was starting to fall out of love with me, and that snapped me out of it. So I immediately called it off, quit my job, and told myself that I was going to make my husband feel loved and wanted. I was going to fix this. I was going to be a better wife if I could. My AP showed up at my house with a box from my office. Stuff from my desk that I requested to have shipped we spoke. He wanted to know what he did wrong. And I told him that I needed to fix my marriage. I told him to leave, and he wanted one last go around. And I told him no. And he begged, pleaded, and, like a fool, I agreed. We went to the guest room, and we went at it. I do not know how long we were doing it. But when he was on top of me, I felt him violently jerk back, and there was a loud bang. I sat up, and my ex was looking at me. 
My AP was on the floor, and there was a large hole in the wall. I tried to say something to my ex, but his eyes were bloodshot, there were tears flowing, and his lips were trembling. I could see he was in so much pain, and I felt so disgusted. I watched as my AP stood up and attempted to leave. My ex looked at him, and my AP told him that if he knew what was good for him, he'd step back. So my ex attacked him. I screamed and cried, telling my ex to stop, and out of desperation, I jumped on his back, which resulted in me getting slammed to the floor. Everything got hazy for a while. Words sounded muffled. But when I came through, my ex had my AP on his side, and he was on the phone. All I could do was stare at my AP's swollen face, and the blood and teeth on the floor beside him. There was a loud bang on the door, and I watched my ex put the phone on speaker, slowly place it on the floor, drop to his knees, and place his hands on the back of his head. The door opened, and the police came in, handcuffed him, and the paramedics came in moments later. I soon learned that he called 911 on himself. Everything went to SHT in a handbasket. At the hospital, my father didn't utter a word to me. He just looked at me with shame. My brother was yelling at me. He looked crushed, asking me how I could do that to my ex. My mother was consoling me, telling me that it was alright, which caused my father to yell at her. His family was furious, his sisters threatened, and his parents looked like they wanted to send me to an early grave. I approached my children, and they refused to speak to me, my sons couldn't even look at me. My AP was heavily injured and needed reconstructive surgery on his face, my ex practically shattered his face. At the hospital, a woman came to my room and immediately attacked me. My brother pulled her off of me, and it turned out she was my AP's wife. I didn't know he was married. He never wore a ring, never once said anything. It made me feel even more terrible. Leading up to the trial, my boys stayed with their grandparents on my husband's side, and my girls refused to talk to me. My ex didn't want to see me as well. I tried to visit him at the county, but I was denied. My brother made sure my ex went to the correctional facility he was working at so he could keep an eye on him. When I asked my brother if he could relay a message for me, he told me to go to hell. During the trial, it was the first time in three months that I saw him. He looked at me with such anger that it hurt more than anything I could ever imagine. He always looked at me with love, even when we were mad at one another. He always looked at me with love, but during that trial, it was hate, and I needed to excuse myself so I could cry in the restroom. As the days went by, I was forced to recount my affair in every detail for all to hear. When I told them how long it was, my ex looked crushed, and my father stood up and walked out of the courtroom. During my ex's testimony, I learned that he came home to surprise me with lunch and a weekend trip for two to the Catskills. He had a full romantic getaway plan only to walk in on us, and he reacted. He stated that when the AP ordered him to step aside, he snapped and beat him, only to stop when he tossed me off him. He quickly called 911 and heard the recording at court. Hearing the pain in his voice, he sobbed as he did what the operator told him to do. It was soul-crushing. The AP couldn't verbally testify and was heavily medicated, so they used images of what he looked like, which turned my stomach because I was responsible for all this. My ex smashed his eye socket, cheekbones and destroyed his jaw. They stated that there were bone fragments too small to piece together. My ex was charged with a third-degree felony and sentenced to seven years, which caused my sons to shout in protest and my daughters and his family to let out a wail that haunts me to this day. The first three months were torturous. I was sued by my APSTBX wife for alienation of affection. My ex filed for divorce. My eldest moved out, my other son stayed in his room, and my twins were rebelling hard. My former sister-in-law attacked me in the middle of Price Chopper. His mother spat in my face when I tried to apologize to her. My father and brother refused to speak to me. Eventually, I needed to find a new job. There was no money coming in, and I nearly went through the savings. But I was pretty much blacklisted in my field. It was bad publicity for the accounting firm, so I started working in retail and worked as a seasonal H&R block adjuster during the tax rush. I almost lost the house. My ex refused to allow me to visit him, and every letter was returned. Crying in the shower became an almost daily occurrence. My parents almost separated because my mother constantly defended me. My brother refused to acknowledge me. Even my friends, whom I had had since grade school, were divided. Soon I began to have thoughts of ending things, of picking up my belongings, and of disappearing. The guilt was so heavy. Eventually, I saw a therapist, and she scolded me. She told me that I just got comfortable with my ex. I didn't see him as a husband. I saw him as a friend with benefits, and I treated him as much. She's right. I did. I got too comfortable with him. I saw him as a companion. Yet he saw me as his wife, the mother of his children, and the woman he loved and desired. I took him for granted. Almost a year went by. After a year of silence from my children, when I cooked dinner, they would collect their food and go to their rooms, refusing to even look at me. 
I did have a few meltdowns, begging them to say something to me, but nothing. My brother got married, and I wasn't invited, my kids were. I continued to try to visit my ex in hopes that he would place me on the visitor list, but I was always denied. My letters were still being returned. It made me severely depressed, and I knew I deserved it. Then one day, out of the blue, my brother showed up. I was shocked to see him and happy. This was the first time since the trial he came to my house, and he just came to scold me. He told me that my ex was in the infirmary after getting stabbed. An inmate tried to ask Shuvali assault him in his cell, resulting in my ex getting stabbed in his stomach and the inmate getting his spine broken. My brother screamed at me, you did this, before going back to his truck. I cried for days after that, because he was right. I did this. I tried to visit him at the infirmary, but I was still denied. For four additional years, I tried to talk to him and still wrote letters, but they were returned. Thankfully, our children visited their father a lot. That is how I learned he was placed in protective custody by my brother since his attack. Through the years, my eldest went to the same college my ex attended and even took the same major. He only calls his siblings, he never wanted to talk to me. He never comes to the house for the holidays, only to his grandparents. My other son followed suit by going to the same college and refusing to call me as well. My twins were hard on me, but they visited their father weekly, which improved their mood, and whenever they got overly rebellious, they had their uncle put them in their place, but my brother and I still hardly spoke. I tried to visit his wife when they had their first child, but I was asked to leave. My mother kept me in the loop about what was happening in their lives. My father still refused to acknowledge me. Then, at the beginning of May this year, my kids were happy, and my sons came home. I didn't know why, and I didn't care, they were home. For four months, my children were around and I did everything I could to show them how sorry I was. But I was mostly ignored. But they were talking to me, and it made me so happy to have a conversation with them, to know what was happening in their lives. My eldest was dating a woman for over a year. My second born was on a college track team. Even my girls began to talk to me again, and I hated myself even more for what I did to them. I saw them smiling again, joking, and eating dinner together. I missed it so much. At the end of August, I was all gearing up for the twins' first day of their senior year, which also falls on their 18th birthday. I expressed my excitement over their birthday party, told them what I was planning to do, and without hesitation, my girls asked me if we could do it on a different day. It confused me because I thought we were starting to get better. When I asked why, one of them said, because dad is throwing us a party and I don't want you near him. That comment shocked me. I asked when their father was released, and they said he got out at the end of April for good behavior. I cried because he was out, and it broke me a bit more. They were around more because he was out. They were happier and more cheerful because they had their father back in their lives. It wasn't because we were starting to heal. They got him back. I asked where he was staying, and they told me that he was staying with my brother. I tried calling. I needed to talk to him, but he refused. I tried going over, holding all of the letters that were returned through the years, and I saw him briefly through the door crack. I shouted out his name, and I was asked to leave by my brother. I handed him the letters and left. When I got to the driveway, I heard his voice. I turned around, and he was walking towards me. I instantly started crying and went to hug him, and he handed me back my letters. You forgot this, he coldly said to me, and I cried watching him walk away. I begged him, I pleaded for him to just talk to me, and he just walked back into that house. My children were staring at me by the door, and they all had no love in their eyes for me. At that moment, I realized that my children were just tolerating me. However, I still want to fix this. I want to tell him how selfish I was. I want to tell him how much I miss him. Tell him that I am so sorry for destroying what we had. So I'm trying to still push through my daily life. I learned from my mother that my AP's ex-wife was visiting my ex two years ago, and she's been coming around to see him. I don't care, really. I just want him to somehow forgive me. I want him to talk to me. I want him to be beside me. I want him to look at me the way that he used to. I want my kids beside us. I just want my family back. Yet I know I don't deserve it. Even if, by some miracle, we become one again, it will never be the same. I was selfish, and I wish I could take it all back. Son's response. This is a response to my mother's post, my selfishness ruined my family. On support for Wayward. I'm a regular on Reddit, so I am using a throwaway because I really don't want any of the people I know in my social life to know that this is me. I strive to keep my past a secret. My college friends don't know that my dad was in prison, nor do I care to tell them. So when I walked around campus and heard a lot of people talking about this post and effing sharing, it brought back a lot of emotions that I have been trying to overcome. So I looked it up, and there was enough information provided to know that it was about my family, which angered me. I reached out to my mother, who began with the damn waterworks, and I yelled at her. 
When I went to see my dad and told him what I did, he yelled at me. My father is a good man. He only yelled at me for cursing my mother. It tells me that I may not love my mother, but I need to respect her. It's hard to respect someone like that. My father always struggled. He would drill into our heads that we should be grateful for growing up in an area where we wouldn't get attacked for getting good grades or getting caught reading by the kids. Where you're jumped for wanting white things, like going to college. He told us it was like that for him in the South Bronx. My aunts told us how he joined a gang at 13 just so he could be left alone while he went to school. When he was 15, his father passed away from cancer, and my father had to be a surrogate parent to his two sisters. Since there was no life insurance, he worked and did what he had to do in order to help pay the rent and put food on the table while still attending school. My dad said it was fortunate that his mother remarried a good man, and they moved to upstate New York for a better life. From what my uncle told me, he and his friends thought my dad was weird. It was the 90s, and my dad walked into school with really baggy clothing and a Puerto Rican flag shirt, and they decided to mess with him. My uncle said they didn't expect my dad to instantly fight them, and he kicked their arses, but instead of walking away, my dad helped him up and asked if he wanted to skip school, share a 40, and talk things out. My uncle said when my dad did that, he knew they were going to be friends, and they started hanging out. He introduced him to my mom, and they hit it off. They went to the same college, and by the end of their freshman year, they were married. Growing up, my parents were a lovey-dovey couple. They were always holding hands and kissing, and it was really embarrassing. Even at the start of my senior year, when everything went to SHT, he was acting like a teenager when it came to my mom. He loved her, respected her. I can honestly say he never placed her on a pedestal. He would tell me that a woman will not respect a man who places them on a pedestal, and when I asked why, he said because they will always be looking down on you. My dad told me that his father and stepfather had the same mindset. You treat your wife as your equal. She is your best friend. She is your confidant, like you are hers. My dad had his quirks. He was a big guy and always joked. He was 5 and 11, 260 pounds, and despite being heavy, he was very active. I used to love it when he would sing to my mom. We all did. He would serenade her buy her flowers, and write on the card, because it's a Thursday and I was thinking about you. He wrote her the occasional love letter, and would defend her honor when someone was rude or disrespectful to her. I always told her how beautiful she was. My dad showed the girls what kind of man they should have in their lives. When it came to my uncle, my dad was always there for him. Even when everyone thought he was a lost cause, my dad never gave up on him. And as my grandfather once said, he knocked the stupid out of him and left behind the man he was supposed to be. That phrase always made me laugh. My dad showed me how a man, a friend, and a husband are supposed to act, and my mother, before her affair, always loved my dad. He always supported her and encouraged her. He was her one-man pep rally when she was down in the dumps, and she was his. For all of us, they had the marriage we wanted to have. Then my mom messed it up. I remember those months. She would talk to my father as if he were beneath her, and he pushed back but restrained himself. Even though my father graduated college and has a successful career as a financial advisor, he can go from zero to ghetto in 0.5 seconds. Grandma said he was like his father. Kind, respectable, and helpful, he wouldn't hesitate to rip your throat out with his bare hands. My dad tried everything. Buying her flowers, trying to take her out to dinner, and dancing, but she was in her own little world. Treating him like SHT, we all saw it. It was really having a big effect on my brother and twin sisters, but my dad would smile and tell us that they would work it out. He would tell us that mom was probably really stressed at work and bringing it home, and I believed that, especially when she quit her job. I honestly thought it was her job that was the problem. Then my dad was arrested. Mom, do you know the embarrassment we felt when the entire school was talking about what happened? My dad was arrested because my mom couldn't keep her legs closed. I couldn't bear to look at you, which is why I went to stay at grandma's house. The sight of you disgusted me, and when I visited my dad, he couldn't bear to look at me. He was ashamed. He told me he failed as a husband and as a man. I told him he didn't, but he said he did because a man would have thought about the consequences of his actions before doing something so effing stupid, and he failed as a husband because his wife effed another man. I told him to please look at me, and he wouldn't. Then you had the audacity to ask us for forgiveness, and for the first time in my life, I wanted to physically hurt you. We were all hurting, and you wanted forgiveness. When I sat in that trial, listening to that 911 call was the worst 25 minutes of my life. 25 minutes listening to my father, who would have harmed others and unalive for you, crying. Asking the operator for help. Telling that woman that he thinks he just unalived someone. Listening to that woman talk him down while hearing him say over and over that the love of my life cheated on me hurt us more than anything. 
I know you tried to act as a character witness for dad. We all told you not to do it, and you did it anyway. Why? Did you want to show us that you still loved him? Tell the court that he's a good man. Because, in my opinion, that cross-examination where you told everyone how long you were with that son of an itch was why we lost him. Why he was sent to jail. And I believe if we had an actual lawyer instead of an appointed one, he would have walked. I had anger issues because of that. My brother became a closet alcoholic. One of the twins was self-harming, and you didn't notice. All you wanted was to try and fix things with dad, leaving me to keep my siblings afloat. I hated you. In some way, I still do. When I went to college, I wanted nothing to do with you. Like my father, I had to be a surrogate parent for my siblings. I was working a full-time job, going to college, and sending you money to help pay for the bills. I don't know why you made it look like you were doing it on your own. Mom, I know it was hard. I know you were really depressed, but you had help with the bills, and Grandma did defend you, but she only did it because everyone was against you. At least, that is what the twins believe. When my dad got stabbed, I almost had a nervous breakdown. I just saw him that day. I was poking fun at how muscular he got, and we had a good laugh at what dad called the prison body plan. He made it sound like a fun commercial. I was halfway back to school when I got the phone call. I nearly crashed the car because my brain turned off. It was hard for everybody. I didn't tell anyone this, but I sat outside that Sob's apartment. I wanted to screw him up so badly. But when I saw him walking with that cane, I remembered what dad said and drove off. As the years passed, grandma passed away, then grandpa a few days later from broken heart syndrome, and dad couldn't attend the funeral. Did you know that both his sisters got married in the waiting area just so he could give them away? The damage you've done to all of us is tremendous, and it didn't help that you kept asking us to forgive you, to give you another chance. You never gave us room to comprehend or heal. You just kept asking, and all I see is that you wanted to make yourself feel better. You didn't give a damn. You didn't try, you just gave us space and acted as if we were supposed to suddenly act like we were normal again. Yes, you did try in the later years but didn't during the time you were supposed to when it was the most important. When dad got out, he told us to start talking to you. You told us that you're a good mother to us, and therefore we should show you some respect. So we did, and it made you happy. For a while, I remembered what it was like not to hate you. Dad was having issues trying to find work at first, but one of his old clients hired him. I didn't expect the twins to throw that bomb at you. Dad did not want you to know he was out. So when you appeared, it really bothered him. He threw up after he spoke to you. He said the very sight of you sickened him. As for your statement in your post about that ex-wife coming to see Dad, she's been coming to see Dad weekly for over three years, and they've been spending time together since he got out. So please stop building a castle in the sky as the two of you get back together. If you want to talk about this, call me. You want to fix things with your children. Call me. What you did last week, posting what is arguably the worst moment in our lives, is pure selfishness, as your title suggested. I told my dad about this, and he doesn't care. He said you're just the mother of his children, nothing else. Thank you for watching the video. If you enjoy listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.